Hi guys, Charlie here from World of Fishing and Bastard Cedar Today in Northcliffe, Johannesburg. We're currently at the World of Fishing and Bastard Cedar Today retail showroom, and today I've got a cool video for you. We're going to be unboxing a brand new MotorGuide XI5 trolling motor with electric steer. This specific model is an 80 pound thrust 54 inch shaft, 24 volt. It is an electric steer with a foot pedal, but we're going to do something extra cool today. We're going to add a MotorGuide GPS pinpoint module into the trolling motor so that this one can then do spot lock and also connect up to a low rance fish farm. So here I've got a couple of the things that we'll need to do this. Obviously I've got the trolling motor, I've got the pinpoint module that's in here, still everything's sealed up in the box. These are a couple of the tools that I'm going to be using today. I've just got a set of Japanese side cutters, they cut cable ties perfectly with no sharp edges. I've got a nice big screwdriver, I've got an electric screwdriver, then I've got non-magnetic screwdrivers set of scissors, some insulation tape, and a box cutter. And over here, I've got some optional accessories for the XR5. Here we've got a trolling motor handle. This is great for not having to reach over the front of your boat to pick up your trolling motor. Um, I've got some plugs so that we can disconnect the trolling motor directly at the front of the boat. And I've also got a quick release bracket. Here I've got the NEMA 2000 starter kit. This is what you'll need to connect the pinpoint gateway to a Lawrence fish finder. Okay, this is my first unboxing, so let's see what happens. All my favorite YouTubers usually break everything while they're unboxing, so I'm hoping I can uh, not do that. So let's just get this thing open. Okay, that's all nice and open. Let's see what we've got in this box. So this is what you'll get when you receive your package. This is the 54 inch shaft, 80 pound thrust, 24 volt. Everything's nice and well packaged. Got protection everywhere. This motor can't move around at all. Here's the actual churning motor. The bracket, there's your motor, here's your shaft. Underneath here is a box with all of your books, the foot pedal and the propeller. You can see that the propeller currently isn't mounted on. And here's the head of the trolley motor. Brilliant packaging for shipping. So let's uh, pull this thing out and have a look at it. So this is the actual trolling motor unit right here. We can remove the protective packaging. You can see how light this actual trolling motor is. This is an 80 pound thrust trolling motor and I can pick it up with one hand. So let's put this down and then we can get inside the rest of the box and see what's, what else is in here. Let's have a look what's inside here. So in here we've got a warranty registration form, some batteries, uh, all your mounting screws, nuts and bolts, and an operator's manual as well as the propeller. In here will obviously be the your washer, your shear pin, everything for the propeller. These little rubber pieces here are actually for the foot pedal that's just below this inside the box. So here is your wireless foot pedal battery operated takes two double a batteries the nice thing about this pedal as well is it does give you some feedback in terms of you know what you're doing with your feet i mean the, the harder you push forward the harder it's going to turn the harder you push back the harder it's going to turn left so you push your toes forward it's going to turn to the right you push your heel down and it's going to turn to the left other things you've got your speed control here which is varial speed control so zero all the way up to 10 and everywhere in between and you've got your actual fire button, what I call the fire button, actually lets the motor run. Other things that you've got is you've got your anchor button, so once it's paired and the GPS is in there, hit the anchor, it'll hold you exactly where you are, and then you've got your motor on and motor off button here. Um, I know that to pair these, you have to take the motor off power, put the motor back onto power, you press and hold both of these, and then it'll sync to the motor, so now that this and the motor will be paired. But once we get that on the test bench, I'll show you how that works. The next box that I'm going to be opening is the Pinpoint GPS module box. This is going to connect up to the control circuits inside the trolling motor. 
and become the new, very clever brain of the trolling motor. Ah, it's a box within a box. So this is the actual motor guard packaging. Precise GPS boat control, pinpoint GPS. There you can see your wireless FOB, your handheld remote. It tells you all about it, the anchor mode, jog mode, while in anchor mode. So that's when you are anchored and you decide to move, let's say, 10 foot to the left, 10 foot to the right, or whatever you may set it to. Uh, the heading lock, so that's gonna you know, hold the specific heading that you set it even if the wind's blowing. Route record, so you can actually recruit, record routes on there, and your cruise control, which will go at a certain heading at a certain speed. So let's get this thing open and see what's inside here. So here we've got good packaging once again. There's your handheld remote, super lightweight. It's already got batteries in it, so Got your heading lock, speed up, speed down, turn left, turn right, uh, motor on, motor off, cruise control, that's your anchor button, and that would be your memory. So you can store all of these numbers used to store onto memory, you can record a track, and then you can replay the track. So here's the actual module that you're going to be installing inside the trolling motor. You'll see that there are two modules here. This one here is going to sit inside the base of the trailing motor, connect to the control board there, and this here, other cable here, is your connection to the uh, gateway that will allow you to connect to a NEMA 2000 low-end setup. This module here sits in the top of the head and has your, G uh, your compass functionality, so this will know which way the trailing motor is actually pointing. So that's the important part there. Other things that we've got here, we've got a, I can just see it from the top here, your lanyard for the FOB. One of the most important things here is your cheat sheet. So this tells you how to calibrate it, tells you exactly what all the buttons do. And on the back, lots more instructions. Definitely worth either photocopying, laminating, putting in your cubby hole in your boat, and then I can hear other things shaking around. Ah, we've got two non-magnetic screws, obviously to hold the compass up inside the head. And we've got a cable tie. Hey guys, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this trolling motor out. You obviously can do this while the trolling motor is on the boat. But I'm going to now start with installing the pinpoint module. So to do this, we have to take the side covers off here. There's a screw on each side. Uh, sorry, two screws on each side. In the head, there's another five screws. So let's get the side panels off here. Here I'm using a star screwdriver, or Phillips head. And these screws are pretty tight, so you need to put a bit of force behind them, and then they'll pop off. Oh. Sorry about that popping sound. That's, and what you want to do is these come off, they come out, and then they're slotted in the front there. So we can put that one down there. Now we want to do the other side. So now that the two side panels are off, this is how you're actually going to install your trolling motor on your boat. So the keys to installing this trolling motor is the way that this trolling motor works, these hang off the front of the boat. Because this entire mechanism, which handles the steering motor, is going to have to sit over the side of the boat. So a major just a quick pro tip here is you want to mount these rails off the side of the boat and they must not line up with the roller on your trailer. So that when you are putting your boat on and off the trailer, you don't hit these on a steep slipway. You just want to make sure that the roller is not going to be able to take these off. If you look over here, this is your height adjustment that controls how high up or how deep the propeller sits in the water when you're using your trolling motor. Another added uh, benefit of this is if you put it here, that you can actually tighten this up and this will prevent the motor from ever being able to be deployed or slipping down or anything like that. In this case, we're going to be removing a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lift this up. Now I'm going to deploy the trolling motor, that's done by pushing that down, sliding the motor forward, and then down. 
locking it in place. So what happens is this is actually keyed to the steering drive. So if I want to stow my trolling motor, I just tilt it up. And I lift it up further. While I'm fishing, it's going to be locked in place. Everything's cool, I'm not too worried. But once I hit some rough water, I may want to just run that down, lock it in place. So that's now locked. We've taken the side covers off to get access to this LED panel. So now with the side covers off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just lift that up slightly and I'm going to press the deploy button again and I'm just going to wiggle this out of the way. Now I'm doing it very carefully in terms of wiggling it out because the LED panel and the screens are connected there. So this is going to give us access to capacitors, you know, the motor control boards, everything like that. Make sure that's still in place and make sure you don't pull that out of the way. So let's just slide that away. If we look inside here, hidden away here is this plug. That is where your pinpoint module is going to connect to and get control of the actual XI5 motor and control the steering, the throttle of the motor, all of that type of stuff. So now that we've got the XI5 open here, we're going to install this pinpoint module inside the motor. So you'll see this is the bottom part, this is what gets control of the motor. That is just going to slide into that slot. Now when you slide it into the slot, you're going to want to move this control cable that connects to this plug over here and this cable which then can con connect to your Lorenz gateway. You're going to just arc those a little bit and there's a slot over here where they fit into. So there, we're going to tilt them over slightly. There's the first, there's the second. Fits in there nice and slug, snug. So now this is obviously going to go up through here up to the head, but we'll get there in a second. Now that I've got that open, you want to take the covers, these little covers, off the control connection and you want to just connect these two. They connect kind of like NEMA 2000. Find the slot and then just clicks into place. And that's exactly where that needs to be. This Lorenz or gateway connector, you're just going to run up through that little gap that they've, they've given you, drop it down through there, underneath this little slot there and hook that in place. Bit of a trick to get it, but if you, there we go, got it inside and that locks inside there. Then the rest of this plug, you're just gonna run underneath there and it fits in its own slot there. Just make sure that this goes back on. And if you can see here, you can actually see a little bit better. This is uh, controlling the lights in that. And you're just gonna push that back into place. Make sure that this ribbon wire goes behind that. And you're just gonna guide this back into place. And as I said, it's a bit easier if you depress this slightly. So let's just get this lined up. And that is that side complete. This does sit loose. Um, it's actually held in place here by the side rails. And just take care underneath here that your NEMA cable does come through that little slot provided. So if we lift it up slightly, you can see that just covers there and it's held in place by the side rails. What you now want to do is you want to take this spiral cable and spiral it within this one here. So pretty easy, we just lift it up and we'll just start spiraling it up. On the bottom of the head you'll find five screw holes that we need to get open. Once you have those five screws loose, you can just slot the head cover off and just be careful that you don't drop any screws because right now they can fall out there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make sure that my wrapping is good. I'm happy with that. 
because this cable now needs to fit underneath there. If you just pop that out, it just fits in a slot like that. That is your power cables down to the actual motor at the bottom. This we're going to want to run up there. This is quite an important part that you'll see on the top part, the cable must come out of the bottom like that. And that is going to be the bottom of the unit. So that we're going to mount in there. Something very important at this stage is you want to get yourself a non-magnetized screwdriver. The reason being is you don't want to magnetize the screws because it is going to be near a compass. So you're going to take the screws and screw them in with a non-magnetized screwdriver. So here I've got the top part with the wires coming out of the bottom and it fits in this area here. And you've got the provided screws that came with the gateway module, sorry, the uh, pinpoint module. Make sure that they lined up. That one's in the hole, that one's also in the hole. And now you're gonna tighten these down. Second screw there. In terms of routing this cable, you should always bring it past that screw hole, then through to the center, and then down. What I also do is I give it a bit of slack inside there. You're going to lift this back up and now you'll see at the bottom of this it's slotted to run a cable through. So just make sure that that cable is not being pinched by a slot and you've still got the cable running there in the safe zone. Now you're going to want to put your head back on. And now you can tighten her up and close her up again. So right now I'm just almost cross tightening so you can do it like a tire, just to get the tension and make sure it's seated correctly. So now we have our compass module in the head going down to our control model at the module at the bottom here. Now the next thing that I do, which is a little tip. Um, it'll help the guys out with the, the older motors a lot more. It'll take a bit of insulation tape. Oh, and careful when you're doing this on a test bench or something that it doesn't fall off. What I am doing is I'm pointing the weight of the motor backwards to move the center of gravity back towards the bracket. If you have it turned the other way, it can fall off the front. So I'm going to take a bit of insulation tape and I am going to just insulation tape a little bit here just to make sure that if you by mistake put a lot of pressure onto the uh, your pedal and have it twisting around itself that this insulation tape is just another safety feature to make sure that you don't pull your cables all the way around the head and pop that gateway out. Okay, that's the bottom complete. I'll do it at the top as well. Same deal just wrapping it around just to give some extra protection you don't have to do this but this is something that I like to do it could save you a GPS module and there we have it so now that we've installed the GPS module up top and the control module at the bottom we're gonna put the side covers back on it's slotted here that fits inside a slot there and take care at this moment and also a good opportunity to double check that your LED panel is in place, it's not pinching anything and then the side cover is going to lock the LED panel in place by just slotting over there. You're going to take your star screwdriver, your Phillips and you're going to just start screwing it in place. And there's the one in the middle of the bracket. And you're going to repeat the same process the other side of the motor. On this side, just be careful and take note that your NEMA cable, your connection to your motor guard uh, and Lorentz gateway, is safely in that slot position. And then you're going to install your side panel back on. Make sure that it's holding the LED panel in place. And that is how you install 
if we put GPS module and we are ready to test. Okay, so now that we've installed our pinpoint module on the motor, let's have a look what came in the packet with the actual XR5. So we've got a propeller, a manual, some documentation, more documentation. We've got the shear pin, the prop nuts and the prop washer that will go onto the propeller. We've got all the mounting accessories to mount into your boat. And we have a packet with supplied screws, cover and batteries for the wireless foot pedal. So let's get this open quickly. And that is the worst set of scissors. So there's my first unboxing fail. So let's open this up. Got a nice warning or important uh, thing here that says before operation the handled remote or wireless foot pedal must be synced with the trolling motor. See instructions on the remote foot pedal or the XR5 owner's manual. So here we've got the cover on the back. So the foot pedal takes two AA batteries which is supplied in the box. So in that packet we have these four stands which now fit inside here and hold the foot pedal level. Those I won't be putting on right now. We've got two screws that will screw this cover onto the bottom of the foot pedal. And the nice thing is there are more instructions on this cover telling you how to turn it on and off. Okay, let's go ahead and put our batteries in. Let's slot the double A's in. That way, that way. Before we close up, let's just see if we have power. And we have power. So let's press and hold the anchor button. Now the foot pedal is off. If we press and hold the anchor button again, now the foot pedal is on. In this case, we're not testing it, so we're going to turn the foot pedal off and heat the system by closing it up. So I do suggest carrying doubles, double A batteries in the boat, as well as carrying triple A's for the wireless FOB. So the wireless remote also comes with a lanyard, so let's put that on quickly. This you're just going to thread through there, and then the entire lanyard around itself again. You can always unclip it if you want to mount it somewhere, something like that, but there it is. So now we've got a powered foot pedal. The remote came with AAA batteries pre-installed and that the, you don't have to turn this on or turn this off. As soon as you press a button it powers and then it will speak to the actual XR5. Now that we've finished installing the pinpoint module and we've put the batteries in the foot pedal, I want to take this and test it. Obviously if this is on your boat it's going to be a lot easier. And I've got a makeshift test bench here. Now I've got two Royal DC31 12 volt batteries. I've got them connected positive to negative here. So they're on series. This is a 24 volt motor. Now I'm going to connect power up to the XR5. Positive on there. And negative or ground onto the remaining negative. And I just heard the trolling motor come live behind me. Right now, you may notice that the trolling motor remote is not working. Reason being it needs to be paired with the trolling motor. The foot pedal is also not working. The trick here is written on the instructions on the back of the foot pedal, as well as on the back of the wireless remote. So, to get the remote paired with the trolling motor, what we're going to do is we're going to remove power from the trolling motor. Ensure that your foot pedal is on, which will be a single beep if you hold the anchor button down. 
So now the foot pedal is on. We're going to provide the trotting motor with power and at the same time press the anchor and motor buttons. So give it power. There's an audible beep and sound that comes out of the trolling motor. Now it's ready to go. Now that we've paired the motor and the pedal, we can test it by going heel back. Motor's turning. Toe forward. Motor's still turning. And over here, I'm just going to check the speed control. And it's running. Even though that we're indoors and we only have about, I'd say, 40% of sky available through this window. I can see on the LED panel here that I do have a GPS lock. These are the displays that you have on the actual XR5. So you've got a battery indicator showing that these batteries are currently good. You've got a satellite showing that you have GPS. You've got an uh, a propeller button that shows you if the propeller is currently spinning or not. So there I've pressed the foot pedal. And my motor is running. Now it's not running, now it is running. Now it's off. The power obviously shows that it's getting power. So if I hit the anchor button, even though I've got very low uh, sky visibility, I'm going to tap the anchor button. Now the motor's already found GPS lock and now it's currently anchoring us. To disable the anchor, it's as simple as just tapping the anchor button again and then your motor's back in a normal mode. To cancel all anchors and everything that you have on, you just tap the propeller button. So, tap the anchor. Now the motor is automatically anchoring. And note how from the head to the bottom, the training motor, even though we've got very low GPS source, would rather do 180 degrees the other way and not wrap the cable up than continuously spinning itself around and throttling itself. This is all down to the revision E of the control module. This is absolutely brilliant. So obviously right now, we're not moving at all and your GPS accuracy is in a circle of within four meters, let's say. Um, so right now, we're underneath the concrete roof. Um, so yeah, I think it's still pretty good. Let's disable that. So now, the prop is still loaded into an anchor mode. If I press the button, it's not going to run the actual motor. So I just tap the propeller button next to it. And now I've got full motor control again. If I tap and run that now, it's going to run permanently at the speed that I've chosen. So right now, even if I press the button, it won't change anything. I can cancel all. And now I'm in back in control with the foot pedal. So that I'm happy that the foot pedal's paired and the GPS module is working in the trolling motor. The last thing that I want to do is pair FOV, the wireless remote, to the XR5. This is done by the same procedure as with the wireless foot pedal. We're going to remove power off the battery, put power back on and touch left and right at the same time and the motor will make an audible beep. So now, I have got control of the churning motor via the remote as well. Now that we've paired our wireless remote to the XR5, I've gotten the XR5 to get a GPS lock again. If I hit the anchor button, the XR5 is getting GPS lock and is in an anchor state. I can disable the anchor again. and we are ready to go fishing. Okay, so one of the safety features of the XR5 is that when you stow the trolling motor, if you look at the lights there, as soon as it gets to a certain level, it disables all power to the unit. Now, a nice thing about this is you're not gonna hit your boat with the running propeller or anything like that. And as soon as I deploy my trolling motor again, it has held GPS lock. So after your quick run and gun to the next spot, you're not going to use GPS lock. As soon as you uh, deploy your trolling motor, it is ready to anchor straight away. And I can display that by tapping the anchor button again. And there it is, ready to anchor. In fact, it's trying to anchor us here. 
So there you have it. Everything that you need to know about the XI5 and the Pinpoint module. If you liked the video, please hit that like button. Please share and subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell to get notifications of our videos in the future. Wishing you guys tight lines and scooping your ears.